Good morning, Alberta. I've been waiting to say that. And um, as you heard, um, I'm from Winnipeg, and I just want to say enough with the shots about the cold weather in Winterpeg, because it seems to me you're um, suffering from some of the same conditions as we experience in my home province, too. I'm really honored to have been invited to come in today to share with you a little bit about what I've learned about inclusion over the years. And as you heard from my very um, earliest time, um, I have been a real advocate for this idea of inclusion long before we even really used that term, inclusion. And I'd like to just share a little bit about why that is, and that's information that isn't in my bio. Um, I grew up in a family that had um, a, a family member with an intellectual disability. That was my uncle, um, Moish. And from the time I was born, he was just a part of our life. And um, my grandmother raised up her boy at a time long before there was inclusive education, long before there was inclusive childcare, there wasn't welfare, there wasn't community living movements, there was just family who came together to provide the supports that were needed. There was a lot of pressure put on my grandmother to institutionalize my uncle. She was a single parent. Um, there wasn't a daycare system. But she said, no, I'm going to keep my son at home. And the story of my grandmother's determination to keep her child with her, a part of the family, it, it's kind of the stuff of family legends. It had a huge influence on everybody in my family. And for me, growing up in that environment, it just made perfect sense that, of course, people with disabilities stayed close to their family. Um, and what I began to realize as I grew a little bit older was that not everybody felt the same way. I had girlfriends, for example, that wouldn't come to play at my house when my uncle was visiting. They were afraid. How could they be afraid? He was the best grown up I knew. He was never too busy to get down on the floor for a game of cards. He was always lots of fun, and I just couldn't get it. What's their problem? Why don't they see him with the same eyes as I do? And I began to realize over the years that it had all to do with attitude. And that's really why I'm here today, to talk to you about what are our attitudes? What messages do we have in society? What experiences do we provide to young children? And as they grow up, what do they see reflected in their environments, at their childcare programs, early learning centers, in their kindergarten classrooms, in their graduation ceremonies, in the workplace, in the neighborhood, everywhere where we are, there are people with disabilities. But for all too many people, they're like invisible. You know, if you haven't had that personal connection, what do you really know about disability? And we can talk about inclusion. We can talk about all of the government policies that support inclusion. We can talk about the kind of professional services that support inclusion. But fundamentally, from my point of view, it, get back, it gets back to what is our attitude? What value do we place on the lives of persons with disabilities? And how do we express those values in our day-to-day -day work? So I want to tell you some stories this morning. I want to tell you about some of the kids that I've gotten to know over the years. And I want to tell you, sorry that we were on the wrong screen about that. Um, why do I ask, have you got attitude? And by the way, I don't mean the kind of attitude that a lot of teenagers have, like talk to the hand attitude. I'm talking about the good kind of attitude.